So uh, firstly, I'm going to say I just loved the film. I watched it on a Friday afternoon and it was just so brilliant. And I, because my wife is working from home, she, she just couldn't concentrate on her work because she just wanted to watch it. So she ended up just sacking off her, her work for the weekend. Um, watching I'm so it, good. She loved it as well. That's amazing. Tell her thank you for me. <laughs> um, but I'm going to begin. My first question really was just, this is your first screenplay. So I was wondering if this is an idea that's been with you a while, if it's something that's kind of been sort of formulating in your mind for a number of years. It wasn't really. I mean, I wrote the, the film about two years after I had gotten an abortion myself and I had been thinking, I know I want to start writing, but everything I write just seems shitty it like is just bad and then I realized I needed to start from a more um, personal place and so when I was thinking about something that would be important for me to talk about um, and something that maybe I hadn't seen a million times before was this experience that I had had with this abortion but then also thinking about um, that ex a real experience I had had being a nanny and that um, that kind of like beautifully complex relationship you have with a family who you nanny for. And I thought, you know, those two things could be juxtaposed in a really interesting way. And so it hadn't really been formulating in my, in my brain specifically. Um, but once I started writing it, I was like, this is what it should be. It should be this interplay between um, having a, a job as a sort of surrogate parent while also deciding not to be a parent. Yeah, because I mean, it's a really striking film. I mean, it confronts kind of issues we don't usually see in cinema. It's incredibly authentic and it's uncomfortable, but it's real. You know, my, like I said, my wife watched it with me and she was so taken aback by how genuine a picture this paints of the kind of female experience. Um, what, so was it, yeah, that the kind of lack of stories, because we don't see these issues and topics explored, that really was the, the, one of the key inspirations for telling it was more because it's like, well, if no one else is going to write these stories, I might have to do it myself. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And since I had just been through it, I had started, you know, watching more TV and film that portrays abortion. I was like, this isn't my experience. You know, a lot of what you see, it's so dramatic. And it's most of the plot revolves around a woman like beating her head against a wall and being like, do I make this choice? And, and I wanted to show a different version of that. And talking to friends, it feels like there are a lot of women who as soon as they find out they're pregnant, they know that they're going to get an abortion. And I wanted to show that version and then also show what happens physically to a woman because I feel like women's bodies are portrayed as sterile and clean and, and beautiful rather than what we go through is kind of a horror show on a monthly basis. I mean, just like the, <laughs> the amount of blood that we deal with. And it was really important for me to show that rather than pretend it's some more, a cleaner version of that experience. Yeah, because I'm sort of reluctant to use the word taboo, but in cinema, these are so because these themes and topics are things we don't see. It almost felt like that. And with that in mind, did it did it feel was this project quite hard to get off the ground? Because like you said, you're showing things that you know fifty percent of the of the world are dealing with every month, and yet at the same time, it did feel like themes that still felt quite striking, which they shouldn't feel like that. But in cinema, they they sort of do in a way. I think the thing that we had going for us is we were going to make this film. We still made it for no money. It was so small. We were like, we can make it for $30,000. That was like our starting point. And of course our budget grew as we were making the film, but I think we didn't have to get that many people's permission. We had to get a certain number of people to sign on. And luckily people, when they read the script, they were like, yeah, let's do this. And we would get a certain number of notes from investors being like, are you sure you want to show that? But because it was so small, we were able to do it under the radar and not have to get notes from, I'm sure if this had been a studio film, we couldn't have done those things because they would have said, oh, this is off-putting or this alienates a certain population or do we really need to see that? Whereas when it was just us, we were like, yeah, let's just show it. So how did Alex come to be involved? What was it about him as a, a director that made him the perfect fit to tell this story? Well, he is a perfect romantic fit for me. So we're partners. Oh, well, um, that, and so that, that helps. <laughs> that helps. So that's part of it. He was in close <laughs> physical proximity to me. Um, but also because we live together and because, you know, we're partners, I know what an amazing director he is. And I know that we would have a really um, trusting kind of honest communication about the film in the way that I wouldn't with any other director. And so when I just started writing the script, I turned to him and I was like, I'm writing something. Will you read this and let me know? And he was like, this is fantastic. You should finish it. Um, 
because I normally don't finish things that I'm writing. And so that collaboration kind of was from the ground up that he was always going to be the director of it. He played a huge role just in me bouncing ideas off of him and him reading early pages. And then I knew that he had, you know, his favorite directors are like Hal Ashby and, um, Sidney Lumet and people who are so grounded and interested in human stories that I knew he would treat the story very well. Yeah, because I guess when you're telling a story that's so important to you and so personal to you, and that trust becomes a huge aspect when it comes to giving the screenplay away. So I guess in in this instance, that that you must it was it couldn't really have gone to anyone else then, Alex. I suppose. <laughs> I don't think so. And you know, it's so funny. So many times he was like, "Do you want a woman to direct this? I feel like a woman should direct this." And I was like, "Yes." In a, way, in a way, I see where you're coming from, but I trust you. And we've had all of these conversations that are so integral to the film's development that, yeah, he was the only person for me in terms of the director. But at the end of the day, when you kind of got home in the evening, did you have to switch that off? Was it, was it quite oh, was it healthy? It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. <laughs> no, we really put our, our relationship into the fire. And luckily it came out it, we're fine, but it was, there was no separation. There's no way to draw that boundary. We would come home and because we were wearing so many hats, we would also be like, did we get a guitar for tomorrow? Do we have the props we need? Like, do we have that location? And so as we were going to bed, it was still talking about the film and it was really, really difficult. But I do think the film is better because we were just always in communication about it. And I, I was talking, talking to a couple of my friends actually over the weekend about, about your movie. And I mean, I was just thinking, because I'm 31, so all my friends are kind of 31, 32 and stuff. And it's quite a strange time period, isn't it? Because I feel like life is happening a lot later now. So we're buying, because our generation are buying houses later. Some of us are getting our first full-time jobs later. We're moving out of our parents later. We're getting married later. All of these things are happening later. But the one thing that's not changing is biology. Our bodies aren't changed. So I know, it's such a pain. <laughs> it's true I mean and that's what this movie is about is the luxury that we're starting to get as people where we don't have to make those sort of life um, solidifying decisions so early because I think previous generations have sort of felt trapped by those choices you know women getting married at 21 22 and then not getting a chance to explore any sort of freedom um, but but yeah the idea that evolution has not caught up to our sort of cerebral um, evolution. It's, it's so unfortunate. And unlu unluckily, women deal with it so much more than men, because men can have children so much later. And women, there really is a point where you have to start making tricky decisions and, and a point where everyone around you starts telling you how much time you have left to make those decisions about being a parent. It can feel um, incredibly overwhelming. Yeah, because I well, my next question was going to be, do you think that society puts too much pressure on women to, to kind of have children settle down? Because I've got a friend and it's very innocent sometimes. She keeps, she, she dreads like Christmas and Boxing Day just because of her family sort of saying, so have you found someone yet type thing? And those conversations can be quite overwhelming and upsetting for her. Yeah, I think there's way too much pressure put on women for that. And I don't know, because I'm not a man, I don't know, know if men are encountering the same conversations, but it feels like because there is this time limit on how late women can have children, that it's a conversation that's more present. There's almost this sense of like, well, you know, George Clooney can wait forever <laughs> to make those kinds of choices and still be a dad. And, and it's, women don't have that luxury. I wanted to talk quickly about the character of Bridget because one of the things I really liked about her was that she's not always sympathetic. Some, she's a very yeah. flawed character. How important was that to this story that she is flawed and she isn't at times the most likable person in this film? Hugely because I don't think we should, I don't think a woman should have to be likable in order for you to care about her story. Um, and she shouldn't be perfect because that's alienating for so many women like me who when they watch a, you know, a perfect protagonist are like, how do I relate to this? I'm so much more of a, you know, I'm so much more flawed. Um, I'm, I'm fallible. And so it was really important to have. And I also just think like unlikable female, you know, not, I don't want to use unlikable, but um, it's rare. It's still rare to have a female protagonist who's messy, who's messy in her life choices. And there's been a real um, surge in those characters recently because women have started writing more. And that's really exciting. You know, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is a huge inspiration just in terms of the way that she lets her characters be messy, but you also love them and you feel seen by them. 
um, yeah. for their fallibility. Uh, so yeah, so I was because yeah, you were obviously working very closely with the wonderful Ramona in this. I was just wondering about that experience because I mean, people say it can be hard to work with children, but is she an exception to that? She seemed brilliant in the movie, and I gathered she, she would be a very easy collaborator. She's the best. She's my favorite actor I've ever worked with. She kept things so real. Um, I felt like I kind of became a nanny again on this set because we would just play all day. They would call cut and she'd be like, let's go over here and like swing on the swing and hang out. And so it kept things in such a like grounded, egoless. She really helped calm my anxiety about the film because all I could do was just be present with her because she is so present. And I think that you really see that in her performance. She's not acting, she's just being herself while also saying these incredibly complex lines. I mean, she's kind of, she seems to me like a little Meryl Streep or, you know, like up there with the best actors in the world that there's no performative, there's no pretending, she's just being herself. Yeah, because I mean, because. I've been on movie sets before where kind of kids are at the forefront of the project and they do seem to have their blissful perspective because they, they don't perceive this as being work. Uh, it seems it. very contagious around the whole set when they're around. It's nice and you just can't get to, things can't get to um, dour. You can't become too consumed in, um, are we getting the shot or are we not getting the shot? Because there's a kid who's like, this is fun. Why aren't you all having fun? And it really is. It brought such a sense of play every time she was on set. And that's where, you know, acting starts from. It starts from a sense of play and curiosity. Yeah. Was it quite hard to say goodbye though? Because with adults, I feel like when you've worked with another adult, you, you can WhatsApp them, you can meet up for drinks every, every few months. But I feel like with, with, if you form a really strong rapport with a child, when you have to sort of say goodbye, it feels, was, was it more kind of significant? Did it feel quite upsetting? It was heartbreaking. And that final scene in the movie is the final scene that we shot. And so those emotions are real in terms of us saying goodbye to each other because we had spent a whole summer spending every day together. Um, and then there's that thing also when you work with a kid that you know the next time you see them, they will have changed. They're growing so exponentially. And that's happening right now. Every time I see Ramona, she's so much taller and she's getting wiser. She's still the same person, but it's, it's this you know, time stamp now when I watch the film that I think, oh my God, she was so little then. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm already nostalgic for that time that we had together. And I was wondering too, when I was watching the film, I mean, because you get sort of those really sort of narrow-minded, well, close-minded people that sort of spend their afternoons stood outside abortion clinics protesting yeah. and stuff like that. And but, but I was watching this movie and I thought, God, I really hope this film reaches them. I really hope that a film like this that shows the human experience that people go through can reach those quite close-minded people. And I was just wondering about if you've had any feedback from anyone in that sort of fun. I mean, I know this film isn't made for them per se, but are you also hoping that this can change the perspective of some people out there and reaches those people? I am because hopefully it's a movie that doesn't hit you over the head. First and foremost, it's a human story and an abortion is a part of the summer, but it's not the entire plot and it's not condemning people who have other points of view. It's just showing the experience for what it is. And a really nice thing has been people of all ages, people who I would kind of assume were conservative, like grandmothers um, or, or people who are really religious. Um, have come up and said, I was really affected by this movie and, it, and I cried and I, and I loved it. And so I don't know if it's changed their point of view on abortion or, or anything like that, but I know that people who I wouldn't necessarily have expected to connect with it have, and that's been the most incredible thing. Yeah, it yeah, must be great, because obviously this film played festivals back when festivals took place, you know? <laughs> before, yeah, I know. You know? Um, and that must have been great, because I mean, obviously you've worked in, in so many projects, but this one you've got such a closer affinity towards than I guess any of your other projects, that hearing positive feedback must be so great to hear, more so than, than usually. It's huge. It's the biggest surprise. I was, you know, I didn't think anybody would see this movie. I thought maybe one or two friends would see it. Um, but the fact that we've kind of gotten to go all over the world and that people are seeing and connecting with it, and especially young women who come up and say some version of this has happened to me or people, oh my gosh, like I went to a festival and um, a woman, when I was walking outside, stopped her car and got out and she said, I had postpartum depression and this was really meaningful for me. And so it's not just the abortion, it's people who are connecting to it for a variety of reasons. And it's, it's been the most gratifying part of the whole thing.
Yeah. So I was just wondering too, obviously we're all sort of stuck. Well, not all of us, but this, the world seems to be split between people working harder than they've ever worked. And lots of people st staying at home, just trying to catch up on sort of Netflix shows and stuff. And I'm, <laughs> I'm in the latter camp. Um, but how, how have you found kind of lockdown? Because you, you, obviously you, you're, you're a writer, you know, have you found this, it's brought any creativity out in you? Have you or has it been quite a period to more sort of reflect? Yeah, in the beginning, I found it incredibly difficult to write because I was so, I couldn't believe what was going on. It just felt so surreal. Um, and it found, it, I had been writing things and all of a sudden it felt like, does this even matter? Is this important? Does anything before this moment matter at all? And then um, I kind of like got off of my righteous soapbox and I was like, no, I think we're still, we can still write. And so it has been a fruitful time. It's been a frustrating time, but I completed a, another screenplay that we're trying to get made and I started another one after that. So, you know, it's been, it's mostly been like a condensed period where you can focus really only on one thing. And that's both wonderful and also maddening. Great. So my, my final question then was really, what is, what is sort of coming up next? Is there anything in the pipeline or is everything kind of paused and delayed because of what's been going on? It feels like everything is paused, but what we're trying to do is this next screenplay that I have is get as far along we can in the development and financing world so that then once we're allowed to be around each other and make movies again and be on set that we'd be ready to go. Um, so there is, yeah, like I said, there is a script that I'm hoping we can get to the starting line so that as soon as we can, we can just make it happen. Yeah, so just quickly, I just want, I mean, do you reckon that you're always going to write very kind of personal stories and very human tales? Because, or can you see yourself one day, you know, sort of writing a horror movie or a sci-fi genre movie? Or are you, are you just more interested in things that really resonate uh, with you? I don't know. I mean, I would hope that it would always remain personal because I think that brings specificity and authenticity. I hope I get more skilled at not having to pull directly from my life that I, that I, because I love writers who are able to make sci-fi movies feel deeply personal and who are able to do genre films and, and, but they also feel like they're coming from a personal place. Um, so kind of in, you know, the long term, I would love to get better at that. But the things that I love the most are human stories that feel like I love Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach and Kenneth Lonergan and all of their stories feel so deeply personal to them. Yeah, because whenever I've always, I, I've, I'm one of those people that's always said, oh, I might write something one day. And obviously I never have. But whenever I've had any ideas formulating in my mind, they're always so real personal stuff and I, I can't imagine what would what could make someone sit down with a kind of blank page and just create a kind of world that 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 for me is kind of well not, not that it's sort of alien to me so <laughs> the same same yeah. I watch those movies and I think I think you know their brains must work differently than mine because when I sit down to write I think about human interaction um yeah those are my favorite well thank you again so much for your time today like i said i really love the movie and i'm really hope looking forward to it being released over here and stuff because i think this is coming out the same weekend cinemas open so hopefully it'll get a few i um, think that's right yeah ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey you guys, yeah. is that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice